Cheers from Japan, I'm a Tokyo Toy Bastard. It's been almost a month since my last video, but today I got a package in from Tony at Retro World Korea. So we're gonna be taking a look at some more wonderful, wonderful Korean bootlegs. Plus a bootleg that is not from Korea, but equally as amazing. Most of the bootlegs we're gonna be looking at today are all Dragon Ball Z related, but before we get into the Dragon Ball Z, I do have one non-Dragon Ball Z bootleg that Tony has sent me. This one. This right here is a prime example of some just wonderful Korean soft vinyl in a beautiful window display box that is in mint condition. Coco, shut up! Coco! My dog won't stop barking. It's pretty hard to find Korean bootlegs boxed in great shape like this. So let's see what we've got going on here. We've got the Ninja Turtles logo, also in Korean. We've got a little sunburnt Michelangelo, or maybe he was boiled in uh, some turtle soup by the shredder. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. We've got a little angry Leonardo, and then the centerpiece here, well, even though it's on the, the left of the box, uh, we have a uh, big Raphael. And down here at the bottom, we've got a little skateboard with an S on it. On the sides of the box, you've got Michelangelo here, uh, I guess he's supposed to be skateboarding, but the skateboard's rather small. It looks more like he's wearing one inline skate. Uh, and then over here we've got Raphael, <laughs> looking, like, looking like he's about to fall off his skateboard. And then we have Leonardo on a skateboard, and obviously Donatello on the skateboard. And that's kind of cool that they've put each uh, turtle on all four sides of the box. Donatello's also looking kind of, uh, yeah. On the back of the box, We've got all of those same illustrations pictured around the outer corners, and then a more uh, classic illustration in the middle here. These are obviously most likely ripped from original promo art, but you can see that they've been uh, poorly copied for uh, this box release. Although, Michelangelo is completely different, so I guess uh, they decided to go with something different for him for some reason. Let's get her open. Since, uh, you know, I don't have to destroy anything to break this box, which is great. And then inside, you can see we've got some weapons up here. We've got a bow staff and a couple of katana. Let's try not to drop them. Let's hold these guys up here. Oh, Leonardo's got a little bit of uh, battle damage on his um, snout, nose, whatever you want to call it. Is that a beak, technically, for a turtle? Let's get a look at the big Raphael here. He is articulated. He's got one, two, three, four, five points of articulation, just like the old toy line. Uh, however, his uh, belt is sculpted on and you cannot put any side there, nor can you put uh, the little triangular weapon in his bag. But he doesn't come with it, and nor does he come with size. So, yeah, let's give him uh, some katana. Yeah. Yeah, those don't fit. I think those are supposed to be for the smaller turtles. Let's give him a bow staff. Yay! There we go. Now that looks much better. Although it's not his correct weapon, uh, I guess we could just pretend that this is the comic version of Donatello. Just ignore these things here. This is a really cool piece. I'm not, I'm kind of torn if I, if I want to display this box or if I want to display this loose. All right, it's time for the Dragon Ball Z portion of the video. Up next, we've got yet another amazing Korean bootleg Sofa B. Three pack. Three pack. Behold, we have Dragon Ball. Three. I, maybe that alludes to the three characters in the package here. We've got Vegeta, who is <laughs> he's kind of cockeyed looking over there at Piccolo. It looks kind of like they're staring at each other here. They're having a staring contest from the side. Duh. Duh. 
But, um, you know, he's in his Super Saiyan form, and they've got the Saiyan armor colors, like, sort of down. Um, he is missing the, the paint inside of the armor, but, you know, simplified paint, I understand. He's also missing paint on his gloves, so he's got uh, flesh-colored gloves. But otherwise, he's no, he's not too weird. I've seen much weirder colors out of some of these bootlegs. <laughs> and with, with this package, I'm not going to be... Uh, all right, let's take a look at the overall package here. Uh, this is one I'm not going to be opening because it is sealed in some plastic, and this is such a nice example of this that I do not want to open it and then risk damaging it or getting it all covered in dust. So we're just going to be taking a look at as it is inside the box, but don't worry. We have something special coming up after this. Up next, we have Son Gohan, and uh, he's, he's looking... A little bit distressed there. Let me back up a little bit. These are based on an actual line of Bandai produced soft vinyl toys from around 1990. Um, and I do not have the original versions of these three particular figures. I do have a couple of the other ones, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. But um, they weren't the best sculpts. And but but they were some of the very first Dragon Ball Z figures to ever be released in Japan. But um, I wish I had a Gohan to compare this to. Maybe I'll put one up on the screen right now so that you can see the official release. And of course, who could forget Pre-Ring and his injured chin. Oh. Um, and once again, here is the legit version of Krillin. Yeah. Not a whole lot of difference. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Uh, let's look at the top of the box. Got Super Saiyan Goku here. A couple different images down here. Side, you got um, a promo image for the Android Saga. Got another Super Saiyan Goku. And some other miscellaneous early Dragon Ball Z images. On the front of the box here, we've got some other characters that are not actually in the box set depicted, although Gohan and Krillin are, but these guys aren't. And on the back of the box, we have an enlarged version of that same Android Saga image. The company that produced this is called Toy X, but it just kind of looks like Tox. So, yeah. Which is appropriate because these are probably toxic. Okay. Here are a pair of actual Super Collection figures by Bandai produced around 1990 to 1991. Uh, we have Super Saiyan Trunks and Super Saiyan Goku. These are the only two actual figures from this line that I still own. Um, I used to own every single one of these, but over time I've traded or uh, sold them. Uh, but they are not too hard to find here in Japan, so... Um, but yeah, just kind of wanted to show the Trunks. Uh, I never get to really take him out of the case, and uh, now he's going back. See you later, Trunks. Whee! Oh, shit. All right, now we're going to be focusing on this gentleman right here, the ever-so-buff Super Saiyan Goku from the Super Collection line. One of my favorite sculpts, hence why I've kept him. Uh, but he is still a bit off, you know what I mean? I don't know. But there's something uh, I really love about this sculpt. Um, all the battle damage is amazing. None of the other figures in this line have, uh, like, the extent of battle damage like this one does. I mean, just look how much of his pants are missing there. Uh, most Super Saiyan battle damage figures that I ever see, even modern ones, you know, they have the pants damage, but it's not this extensive. Uh, but the hair sculpt is really interesting on this one. Earlier on, when Goku was an adult and became a Super Saiyan, Toys had a really hard time, I think, trying to get the sculpt down right. And this one's, you know, not bad. It's, it, it's, it could be better. I, I think this, this one right here is like way too fat. But, you know, it's not bad. I, I, I really like this one. But, you know what's even better? A bootleg. Prepare yourself for this one. And here we have it, folks. The Super Saiyan Son Goku Super Collection Taiwanese bootleg. This is the only bootleg that I am showcasing today that is not from Retro World Korea. It was not found in Korea. It was sent by a friend that lives in Taiwan that notifies me when he finds interesting bootlegs. Before we take this bad boy out and put him side by side to the legit version, let's take a look at the box. Of course, this box is in 
uh, a bit more rough condition. That goes without saying for most bootlegs of this era, but uh, here we have the top of the box with uh, <laughs> the character on the, the top there. On the sides, we've got the same images. And then on the back, you've got this glorious, even more tan version of the figure that's inside. Without further ado, let's crack it open. By the way, I hate the term without further ado. I think like 90% of YouTubers that do uh, like reaction videos say that and it drives me insane. So I said it just to spite them. All right, here he is. Let me uh, take this off. Okay, and now we've got him out of the package. And this is the first time I've actually held him in hand. And I'm very surprised that this is actually not done in a soft final. It's actually done in a hard, like, PVC material. So let's check uh, check out his articulation here. This arm moves, this arm moves, his head turns, and his waist swivels. Guess what? The legit version has zero articulation. He's got, like, uh, ridges on his arms, but those actually barely move. That's, that's the ex full extent. This one can go all the way up and down, around if you want it. I just don't want to break it. Um, and yeah, and his head moves, which this one doesn't do that. Most soft final is uh, unarticulated. But let's compare them visually side by side here. Um, let's start with uh, let's start with the, the legs and go up. So they have recreated the battle damage on the bootleg here, um, and you can tell this is not like a a, a direct uh, recast. That this has been sculpted uh, from scratch, or maybe maybe they uh, did do a recast and then just simplified it or something like that. I'm not sure how the process works, but uh, you know they've got they've got the big chunk out of his leg there. They've got the almost complete pant leg missing on this side. Uh, the boots are done in different colors. I really like the bright colors on this one, actually. On the bottom of the feet here, you've got the Bandai 1991 stamped on this foot. And then on this foot, there's nothing. Uh, you've actually got a bit more pants kind of hanging off here, which I guess kind of makes more sense. I don't know. It, <laughs> with <laughs> you, you would think with this... Uh, no, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's it's even more clear that this is uh, completely new sculpt just by looking at the back there. And then if you look at his butt, um, you know, he's actually got a nicer butt, I think. This this Goku's got quite a flat butt. <laughs> Get a look at his belt here. Very simplified belt on the bootleg. Yeah, overall, just kind of softer details. Let's uh, take a look at the arm sculpt here. Yeah, again, softer details, but I really like it. I really like these softer details. I mean, this is actually like more like an action figure, less like a soft vinyl toy, which is really awesome. And then on the back, you've got a uh, screw, which a lot of the um, older bootlegs and even older legit figures produced in Asia had screws in the back. So um, I'm actually kind of a fan of the screws in the back. If it's just the one single screw that holds the figure together. And let's take a look at the back of the hair here. Again, this is a completely brand new sculpt for the hair. They did not uh, copy this mold. And I want to ask you guys uh, your opinion. Which one do you think is better? From the side here, yeah, there's a huge difference on the face and the hair. From the front, I mean, I mean, just look at that face. How could you not love that face? It's so good. Side by side. Yeah, these are <laughs> these are very different things here. And uh, from this side as well. All right, guys. Uh, which one do you think is the better sculpt? Or rather, which one would you prefer to have in your collection if you had the option? If I had to give one away and keep one, I would definitely keep the bootleg. It's just way too interesting. But yeah, man, I'm really surprised that this thing is not soft vinyl. That's really interesting that it's made out of a harder plastic. That's really cool. There are a lot of Super Collection bootlegs out there, but I do not know if the company that produced these Taiwanese Super Saiyan Gokus produced any other figures in this line. I would be really interested to see if uh, they did, because if they're done in this like overly tan body with these uh, handsome faces, and you know, don't get me wrong, the, the Japanese sculpts, especially on some of the other figures, they, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty funny looking sculpts too, but 
There's something about this one that's just like, is just a god tier level bootleg. It's, it's very unique. Let's just say that, it's very unique. So guys, let me know what you think about these bootlegs. Let me know if you want to see some more bootleg reviews. If you haven't seen my previous uh, bootleg videos, I'll link a couple of those at the end of the video, so make sure you check those out. Until next time, guys, Happy New Year. Have a happy and safe holiday, and I'll catch you guys in 2022. Adios.